Okay. Now another OSPI. Definitely this type of question will come. Today also one question came related with the picture. Now uh, I guess you can see this. Can you see this clearly? Question. Now you can see there is a there is a type of that count report WBC 2.1 by 2.1 by RBC 2.25 hemoglobin 6 grams per deciliter. Then platelet 72, platelet 72. And you can see uh, three uh, histograms there, right? WBC histogram, platelet and RBC histogram. Then, now you can, what, what, what is the thing you should not hear? Now here, it says granulocyte uh, 37%, then uh, lymphocytes uh, 49%. Uh, then meet, this is a three-part analyzer report actually, right? Meet is 12, 12%. Or something, right? Then uh, actually, what is the thing you must not hear? WBC is low, right? Then RBC number also low, hemoglobin low, right? Then platelet low and hemoglobin related increases. So hemoglobin increases are low because hematocrit is 16, right? MCV is 73, MCH is 26, NCH is 33, right? Then actually, uh, part uh, today they gave uh, one part, the uh, RBC part of this uh, type of uh, full blood count report. Only RBC part they gave with high MC, right? That is actually megaloblastic anemia. Some people thought that like as platelet club. Actually, platelet not they gave there, right? They asked about the clinical condition. That, that type of questions they can ask, right? Don't worry about that. Clearly, you observe the, uh, the, the slide, right? They, Really observe the slide and uh, go through the whole parameters quickly within two weeks. Right? Then you can. Then what you have to do? You first read the question, read the questions quickly. Then observe clearly the picture. Uh, then don't go to read the questions after you observe. That is a <laughs> that is not a trick actually. Quickly read the questions. Then you go to the uh, picture and observe. Then you can you your, your questions are in your mind. If you uh, not have have. have at the sufficient amount of time, then you can give the answers even they change the slide, right? That is the that's a type of tactics, right? Okay, first read the questions quickly and go to the picture and uh, carefully uh, observe the picture, right? Now here, WBC 2.1, RBC 2.25, hemoglobin 6 and platelet 72. What do you think about this? Now here you can see all parameters are low, all parameters are low, right? Uh, okay, this can happen in two condition. One is pathological condition, no clinical condition. Other one is mechanical condition. Okay. What is, I will discuss about the clinical condition first. This type of uh, blood uh, report can come the, from the patient suffering with aplastic anemia. Okay. Aplastic anemia. Main three cell lines are getting low. Aplastic anemia. What is the mean of aplastic anemia is the normal blood cells, so main blood cells are not producing with sufficient amount in the bone marrow, right? Any that's anemia. That's a type of anemia. 
right? A plastic, no cells. A plastic and in that case, in peripheral blood, obviously your WBC count, platelets and RBC will get low. Understood? The A plastic anemia is a clinical condition. And we, uh, our term is for this is, what is the term we use? Term is pancytopenia. In blood picture reading, or in blood picture reporting, we use the word pancytopenia. Pancytopenia means main three cell lines are getting get low, right? WBC low, platelet low, and hemoglobin RBC low. Obviously, hemoglobin also low. Right? That is called pancytopenia. That pancytopenia present in may be present in a plastic anemia patient, right? That is the clinical side. When we go to the mechanical side, this can happen uh, because of a pre-analytical pre error. What is the error? Is poor collecting, partial eclipse. This may be because of this uh, report may generate due to the uh, partially cluttered sample. Another one is due to the partial aspiration by the uh, hematology analyzer. Partial aspiration. Okay. Then partial eclipse or cluttered blood sample. Right. Those are the reasons. Uh, those are the possible reasons for this type of result. If you have platelet clumps, then you should go to the platelet histogram. If you guess platelet clumps, you can go to the platelet histogram and observe whether there are any elevation at the right hand side. Actually, in this blood picture, in this uh, full blood count report, you don't have any elevation in the platelet or... Uh, now, the first histogram is WBC histogram, that is, that shows the neutrophil and lymphocytes. Don't worry about that, then go to the second two diagrams, right? The next diagram, right? Second and third diagrams. The one of that is platelet histogram, other one is uh, uh, RBC histogram. Both of that, not showing any uh, elevation in right hand side. Therefore, platelet clumps not detected by this analyzer in this case. Understood? Right. This type of blood picture can give to uh, OSPI. Right. Next. Okay. Another test that can come, uh, another picture that can come to the OSPI. This is called Hans test. Right? This is called Hans test. What is Hans test? Another name for Hans test is acidified serum lysis test. Acidified serum lysis test. Very simply, I will take the pathological condition here. What happens in some pe some patients, right? Uh, at the night time, when 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 their blood get uh, acidified due to the carbon due to the carbon dioxide, right? When they are serum all the, the normally our blood become acidified actually in the night time with the carbon dioxide. Because of this acidified serum, as the, the acidity of the serum, in some patients, they are red blood cells will be hemolyzed. That's a type of clinical condition, that's a pathological condition. Right? Because of the acidity of the serum, their red blood cell uh, can be struck. That condition we called as PNH. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin condition, or no? because of that, their urine, their urine can pass hemoglobin in the urine because of the acidified serum, because of the acidity of the serum. When the patient serum or plasma gets acidified, right at the night time, right, their red blood cells will be destroyed or destruct. Then hemoglobin can pass in the urine. That condition that this is called as paroxysmal, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. What is the difference between hemoglobin urea and hematuria? Hemoglobin urea means right uh, pass hemoglobin with the urea and hematuria is pass red blood cells with the urea. Okay. Here this condition means paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. Right? Then, uh, because of that, uh, patient release some hemoglobin with the urine. What are the tests we can do to screen this? One is Hans test or acidified serum lysis test. What is the principle? When PNH cells exposed to the 37 to patient's own or normal serum, patient's own serum or normal serum, at pH 65 to 7, that is acidic serum, they show abnormal lysis. Usually, normal patients, normal persons, red cells should not lie in this pH. 
supply because of the disease they shows their rbc lies due to this acidity right then that is the principle then we acidify the serum we take the patient serum whole serum or we take the normal serum and we acidify it then add the patient's red cells to there and we observe any light is present or not now here you can see we can uh, do that with the room temperature at 37 then we observe there is a uh, light is in the room temperature as well as 37 then that means the acidified serum you can see there uh, you can see a hemolysis there right that is because of the disease PHA, right this is called hands test but how they can ask the patients they can give this type of tubes uh, three sets of tubes can give right three sets of tubes can give with plasma and uh, with some hemolysis and they may ask what is this test then you have to give the answer hands test or in another word acidified serum lysis test what is the disease condition you can give the answer pna if, if anyone cannot remember the long name you can write pna paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea okay what are the further tests you can do to uh, identify this uh, condition then you can do uh, hemoglobin identification in urine urine hemoglobin you can do for that uh, you can uh, you may remember that uh, spectroscope observation to uh, spectroscope observation uh, you can observe the urine through a spectroscope method spectroscopic method right uh, you observe the urine through a spectroscope that, uh, that test is not so easy actually now it is not so easy right then uh, that's a one right uh, then you can do urine hemocytary urine hemocytary urine hemocytary test right that's a type of iron stain technique right then urine, urine hemocytary, then urine urobilinogen uh, level you can do. Urobilinogen uh, no, not affected this because uh, indirectly, uh, indirectly bilirubin increase here. Therefore, urobilinogen or bilirubin not increase in urine. Urine hemocytary you can do, right? Another confirmatory test is very important flow cytometry. You can do flow cytometry to confirm this PMH disease, except of the hands test. Hands test is uh, actually screening test, confirmatory test is we are not going to do confirmation test for this one once hands is uh, positive we report it as uh, hands positive and the pnh but if you need to confirm you can do a flow cytometry for that right that is about the hands test this can come to the next one yeah right okay another important thing right now here this is a blood picture again i hope you can see my the point again right now uh, you can see normal red blood cell as I previously told normal red blood cell now here this is a normal red blood cell except of that you can see red blood cells with these points these are target cells now you see major populations are target cells except of that you can see these type of tiers of cells too right? if you having this type of blood picture and if you uh, if they give you a tip uh, or, or some points or some hints hemoglobin low rbc count low right and uh, this type of blood picture with all those things you should go to you should think about this thalassemia this is a blood picture of thalassemia major thalassemia major right then what are the other tests you can do to confirm this thalassemia major you can do hemoglobin electrophoresis and HPLC to confirm the thalassemia major, right? Then, except of that, you can see target cells, major population of target cells in the thalassemia blood picture. Thalassemia major picture is normocytic, 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 hypochromic blood picture, normocytic, hypochromic blood picture, right? This goes under the this thalassemia major goes under the hemolytic anemia. The hemolytic anemia is a type of anemia and the blood cell mo RBC morphology is normocytic normochromic. But in thal especially thalassemia, that is normocytic hypochromic. Okay. Actually, they will not ask those blood picture recordings. They will ask what are the cells or what are the major type of abnormal in, uh, red cell inclusions you can see. Those are uh, target cells. Right. Another important area I need to discuss about the reticulocyte count. Uh, 
right? Today also they are they they gave a picture of the genocide count. Then they 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 go it's around the genocide count only. Then again I will revise about the genocide count. Reticulocytes are red blood cells with basophilic switching, so basophilic remnants. Sorry, red blood cells with RNA remnants. This red blood cells with RNA remnants. When the RBC formation, it starts with the erythroblast. From the erythroblast to the uh, RBC, there are some stages, early stages. Early erythroblast, then intermediate erythroblast, then late erythroblast, then nucleated red blood cell, then reticulocyte, then RBC. Right? Then reticulocyte count, uh, we can do to find out the uh, or screen the hemolytic conditions. If patients suffering with hemolytic anemia or any other hemolysis due to different reasons, right? Reticulocyte count increases. Hemolytic anemia, there are uh, different types of hemolytic anemia present. Last uh, in previous session also I talked about the hemolytic anemia. You can go through that, right? Hereditary and acquired hemolytic anemia, then uh, red cell membrane defects, then uh,